Let's continue working on the drum's hip-hop loop from the last chapter. We've already cropped the loop and defined slices. If looping your sample is your only goal, and you don't plan to use the sample in a sequencer program such as Reason, then aside from applying pitch, gain, or other adjustments, you may decide that your work is done. Note that even when I slide the sensitivity slider back down to zero, my loop continues to play seamlessly. However, to adjust the loop's tempo, pitch, timing, and many other parameters, you'll need to define slices throughout the sample. You can see that by setting the sensitivity slider very high, Recycle will probably create slices where there shouldn't be any. Similarly, if I set the sensitivity too low, there are some desired beats that were not detected. Notice that with the arrow tool selected, when I hover my cursor over a slice or between two slices, my cursor indicates that I can preview the slice I'm pointing at. Clicking allows me to audition my slices individually. Clicking and dragging across the slices allows me to hear them in succession. Note that dragging across slices backwards does not play their sound in reverse, and you may expect that if you're accustomed to the scrub tool in Cubase or Pro Tools. A good way to ensure that you have the right slices separating the right sounds in your sample is to listen carefully to the entire beat and get a feel for it, and then listen to each slice individually. If you hear two beats in the same slice, you'll either want to create the second slice manually or increase the sensitivity slider until that second beat is also detected. Some slices will be detected by Recycle more easily than others. Samples with more elaborate rhythms or slow attacks, such as a legato flute sample, may require even closer attention. At the start of my sample, I have a downbeat, the first beat in a sample or bar of music. In this case, it's a kick drum. I can hear the slice on its own by clicking on it. My second beat, which was also detected and sliced neatly by Recycle, is a hi-hat sound. The third slice, however, contains two beats. I can see this more closely by right-clicking or control-clicking on the Mac on the third slice and choosing Magnify to Fit Slice. Again, notice that when I click to preview the slice, you can hear two distinct beats. A snare followed by a hi-hat. I could manually slice the second beat with the pen tool. Doing so results in a locked slice in the position I clicked. Locked slices will remain in place at all times, regardless of changes you make to the sensitivity slider. Select the arrow tool above and click the slices to preview them. That's a lot better. Each sound is in its own slice. Any slice can be locked by right-clicking or control-clicking on the Mac on the slice marker handle directly above the vertical line of the slice marker and selecting locked. I made a pretty quick visual estimate of where the second sound begins, but I can't help thinking that Recycle could do a better job here. Keeping an eye on the space between the snare and hi-hat sounds, I will gradually increase the sensitivity slider. There, we should now have all the drum sounds in the sample in neatly divided slices. I'm going to switch to a different loop called Disco Beat. In rare cases, you may find that a certain sensitivity setting finds and slices nearly all of the desired beats in the sample. Set the sensitivity slider to 79. Almost every beat is sliced. When I increase the sensitivity to pick up the remaining beats, Recycle finds not only the beats I want, but also incorrectly places slices in noisy areas. To solve this, we can use the mute and lock tools from the toolbar above. Put the sensitivity back to a setting that finds most of the beats you're looking for. In this case, 79. Let's use the lock tool now. I'm going to zoom in so it's a little easier to see what I'm doing. Click on the slice markers that you want to keep. Once everything is locked, you can increase the sensitivity to pick up any additional slices and lock them in place with the lock tool. Scroll to the middle of the loop and increase the sensitivity to 90. Recycle has placed a few too many slices. I could either lock all the slices I know I want and reduce the sensitivity completely, leaving only those slices I've locked, or I could simply use the Mute tool to have Recycle ignore them. The advantage of using the Mute tool, rather than always deleting unwanted slices, is that you can quickly and easily unmute later if you change your mind. Slices can be moved easily. Just drag on their marker left or right to reposition them. As I mentioned before, I can add slices manually using the Pen tool. 
To do this, simply choose the pen tool from the toolbar above and allow your eyes and ears to be the judge of where your slices go. Here's a tip for creating clean slices. Zoom in all the way. Notice that at this zoom level, with the pen tool selected, Recycle places a vertical line indicator along the waveform to suggest ideal slice locations. A second line indicator stretches somewhat like an elastic to show you places where the audio amplitude is zero. This is known as the zero crossing and is usually a great place to create a slice. To disable this snapping feature, hold Alt or Option on the Mac and click anywhere you'd like to create a slice. It's recommended though that you keep snapping on since slicing elsewhere may lead to pops and clicks in your audio. You may find it easier to position slices with the waveform grid visible. To enable the grid, choose Show Grid from the View menu. This grid will help you find every 16th note in a bar of music. In other words, every bar is divided into 16 pieces which commonly begin and end on the beat. Any slice that you add manually will be automatically locked, but as with any slice found by Recycle, these can be locked or muted in exactly the same way. In the next chapter, we'll look at the Tempo and Stretch tool.